You know, in today's world with technology all around us, many people feel intimidated by their own personal computers. It's naturally assumed by a lot of people that everyone knows how to use a computer. I mean, it is the 21st century. Who doesn't know how to use a computer, right? And for those people who don't, they kind of sometimes feel stupid for not knowing. Well, the truth of that statement is it's crap. It's just absolute crap. You just don't know what you don't know. And that's what I'm here to help with. Now, if you already have a pretty decent understanding of computers, uh, how to use them, what all the bells and whistles do and all that, this video probably isn't for you. Uh, this video is for the person that maybe knows just enough to be dangerous, but wants to learn more, but not feel like they have to take a class to be a little more knowledgeable about computers. Now, I've spent over 30 years in the IT industry and working with computers. I can take a laptop a part of my sleep. When I work on a software problem, my mouse just goes where it needs to. I don't even really think about it. But if you put me in an automotive garage and open the hood on a car, I would absolutely freeze in terror. I don't know one end of a car engine from another. All I know is that if I put the key in the ignition and start it, I can drive it. And that's how a lot of people look at computers. They know how to turn them on and everything else scares the crap out of them. Not everybody wants or needs to know how to use a computer. And many people are just fine living their daily lives and never touching one. And there's a lot of people out there who want to know more but feel absolutely overwhelmed at the amount of knowledge there is on the internet. They'll get on YouTube and they'll search for basic computer information and some of the channels out there will literally just go right over their head and then they just give up. On this channel, I try to take all the techie stuff that blows your mind and just make it a little simpler for you so you can understand it. I use a lot of analogies and layman's terms to take something that might seem complicated to you and just make it simple. So I'm going to be creating an entire series of videos just for the average computer user. I'm going to be covering all aspects of computers, but only to the extent that you need or want to know. I'm not going to be going too far in depth into any one specific topic. They're all just going to be made to familiarize you with the basic terminology and the knowledge that you need to feel comfortable. So here's some of the stuff that I'm going to be covering in my upcoming series. What are the different types of computers? What is all that stuff inside the computer and what does it do? What is hardware and what is software and what's the difference? You're going to learn all about peripherals, monitors, mice, keyboards, USB storage drives, anything that plugs into your computer. We're going to cover all the different operating systems that you might find on a computer, including Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and the pros and cons of each. And as we move along and you find these videos useful, we'll dig a little deeper. So if you specifically have something that you'd like to know more about, leave a comment down below and let me know. Let's have a conversation about it, and I'll do my best to cover it for you. So consider this a crash course on everything computers, but explained in a language that you can understand. So if this sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe so you get notified when I release these videos and you'll be a computer whiz in no time. So in today's introductory lesson, we're going to cover the most basic topic, which is what are the different types of computers and which one is best for me? Let's get started. So there are three main types of computers. There are desktop computers, laptop computers, and what's known as all-in-one computers. Now each of these have their own advantages and disadvantages. And I'm going to briefly cover those for you, but we're not going to go too terribly deep. I just want you to be familiar with the different styles. This style of computer is what's known as a desktop. It is basically an enclosure for all the individual hardware parts inside the computer that make it work. They come in all different sizes from super small, like this little guy, to super large. But they're all considered desktop computers. Now, desktop computers are usually the most common machines. They are generally designed to sit in one place like a desk connected to an electrical outlet. And they do require one of these, which is called an external display, in order to see what's going on with the computer. This is a laptop computer. It's also an enclosure for all those individual parts, just like a desktop computer. It's just on a much smaller scale. It has a built-in power source inside called a battery, which allows you both flexibility and mobility. So you can charge the battery, unplug it, and take it with you. Now, instead of an external screen like I showed you with the desktop, this one has a built-in screen. So you can do everything you need to do while away from a power source. It can do everything a regular desktop computer can do just on a mobile platform. Now, with the convenience factor of having a mobile platform and everything literally right there on your lap, laptops are generally a little more expensive. Now, this is what's known as an all-in-one computer. As the name implies, everything you need is right here all-in-one, including a big, beautiful display. 
Inside this one enclosure, it encompasses all the parts necessary to have a computing experience. Like a desktop though, it does require a constant power source, so it is not mobile. But because the screen is built into the machine, you do not need to buy an external monitor to use it. Like the laptop, it can do everything a desktop can do. So what are the advantages of one over the other? Well, I'm gonna tell you my experience in 30 years of repairing desktops, laptops, and all-in-ones, and what I think would mean most to you as a consumer. So the desktop computer is probably the most common computer out there. The advantages that it has is, as far as repair and servicing, because it is a larger machine and has independent parts, it is gonna be easier to repair. Because they're more common, generally parts are gonna be more readily available and usually a little bit cheaper. And because they are easier to access the individual parts, generally they're easier for your average person to be able to get inside them and make whatever changes or upgrades necessary by yourself. Getting inside the computer is much easier. Usually it's just a couple screws and one of the covers on the desktop computer comes off and you have full access to everything inside of it. Additionally, desktop computers are meant to be more upgradable than laptop computers. There's a lot more parts available and you, there's a lot more you can do with it. You can easily access the slots and ports that you need to add cards and anything you want to upgrade over the years. Because of all this, desktop computers are generally the least expensive of the three. Laptop computers, while certainly more convenient and portable, are more difficult and expensive to repair. As you can see here, unlike a desktop computer, which has multiple parts that are easily accessible, with a laptop, everything is kind of built in here. It's all one piece, basically, maybe with the exception of your storage drive and memory, everything that controls the computer is built onto this one board. So you really have to be knowledgeable on how to repair and or replace these things, which makes them more expensive. It is definitely a trade-off for the portability and mobility that you get of having a complete computer system right there in your laptop bag. Generally because of this, parts are a little more hard to find and are going to be a little more expensive. And you have to, again, be knowledgeable enough to know how to replace those parts versus a desktop computer that you can literally just unplug and plug something in relatively simply. So because of that, laptops generally are going to be a little more expensive. And the downside also to laptops is that there really isn't a whole lot of upgradability other than storage and memory. So it's a trade-off. Do you want the portability and mobility of a laptop with the lack of upgradability at a higher price? Or do you want a machine like a desktop that is a little more upgradable, but you can't take it with you? I have seen so many people buy a laptop and literally leave it sitting on a desk and it never moves. And for that reason, I have no idea why they bought a laptop. So if the computer is going to sit on a desk, buy a desktop or an all-in-one. And since we brought up all-in-ones, probably my least favorite of the three is the all-in-one type of computer. Now, there are some advantages, and one of those advantages is that this is basically a desktop computer with a built-in display. So you don't have to go purchase an extra display to use a computer, which is nice. The other advantage is that it doesn't take up a lot of space on a desk because it is all built into one device. So there is that. The downsides though is that it essentially is a large laptop as far as repairability goes, meaning you have to know how to take this thing apart to do any upgrades at all even if you're just upgrading the storage or memory, you still have to know how to take it apart. So uh, that can be a problem. The other problem is, is that some of these all-in-one machines tend to overheat because there is a lot going on inside and a lot of times there's not enough ventilation. So you have to be careful of that. Price-wise, they can generally start somewhere between desktop and laptop and they can get very expensive into the thousands of dollars. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend an all-in-one just because you got it as a deal. Uh, or because you think that's what you want, you need to consider the cost of repairability and upgradability going forward. A lot of people like them too because they're touchscreen and generally that means you don't have to have a mouse and keyboard, which means less room on your desk. But the other disadvantage too is that even though it's got a built-in display, like a laptop, it's not portable, so it has to remain connected to a power source. So those are the three main types of computers. Which one do you prefer? Let me know down in the comments and let's have a discussion. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video and got some benefit from it, make sure you subscribe so when I release the next video in the series, you'll get notified. Until then, thanks so much for watching.